right, so welcome to physics. I am your physics teacher, Mr. Fernando. And last time we were looking at the definition of energy. Now the textbook definition we said is the ability to do work. But here we were stuck because work, we had to define it. And turns out the work is defined as the transfer of energy. So if you're clever enough, you will realize that A, these two things depend on each other. So the definitions don't really explain what either thing is. And since we cannot really understand this, most physicists put it into a box of ignorance. So in other words, we're gonna do that. But if you're curious to see what the analogy that's best gonna help you think about energy, check out my previous video, and then that one's gonna help you start to think about energy, and that way we know what it can do if we think of it like money. But now let's try to go the more physics traditional way. Since they cannot explain these things, the best thing that we can do, we're gonna to try to come up with ways to calculate the work done. And from that, once we do more problems, suddenly energy will start to make a bit more sense. So let's try to come up with the formula of work. So work is gonna be F delta D. So, we're going to use the letter W to represent work. And traditionally, this was known as the inner product. So this is a vector application. But over time, you know, nobody ever wanted to say the inner product. It became too difficult. So to make it more friendly, we're going to define the formula to just be F dot delta d so the inner product is the same thing as the dot product but again the dot product is just more friendly you may have seen it in your calculus course well let's take a look well the formula for work depends on two vector quantities being dotted together it depends on the force and displacement All right, so then again, we couldn't come up with a good definition of work. The best thing we can do is try to understand the formula so we can calculate it and hope that we understand it through different examples. So to calculate work, notice that the left side, there's no vector sign on it. But on the right side, we have the vector for the force and we have a vector of displacement. So work, since it has no vector sign, it must be a scalar quantity. In other words, it's not a vector, right? It's just a scalar quantity. And the units that we use to measure work is gonna be the same units that we use to measure energy, right? Because these two are actually very much related. Work is a transfer of energy. How do we measure energy? In terms of joules. Joules, and we could use a capital letter, J. So let's sort of pick apart this formula. This is a new type of calculation we've never seen before. We take two vector quantities and we take the dot product of them. Not so easy. It's a totally new calculation. So now I need to teach you more math. So like I keep on saying again and again in physics, I have to teach you math as well. But I also have a math channel. So if you're interested, please join your math teacher, Mr. Fernando, and subscribe. And there I could teach you purely math and here I need to teach you math with the physics. So again, please subscribe to that channel. Okay. All right, now let's go back to our formula for work. Work is the dot product of the force with the displacement vector. This is a new mathematical operation, and we can have two ways to calculate it. The first way is called the geometrical way, geometric. And that's gonna require us to think of the magnitudes. So it's gonna be the magnitude of the force, the magnitude of the displacement, times cosine of the angle form when the force vector 
and the displacement vector are joined tail to tail. So this symbol just means the magnitude. So another way we can write it more friendly would be work equals to F delta D. Because notice here, if we're talking about the magnitude, I could drop the vector and I just keep it as a scalar quantity. So force, magnitude, displacement, magnitude. But since it's magnitude, it has to be positive values. Cosine, and no one really writes this, F comma delta D. More commonly, you're always going to see this, this formula written as theta, where you need to be very specific here. Theta is the angle formed when F, in other words, the force vector and displacement are joined. tail to tail. All right, so we could draw a quick diagram to help us visualize how to calculate this. And here we have a force, and this force is acting on a displacement of an object, and the amount is of energy that's transferred, well, that's how we calculate the work done. So we could have, for example, you're pulling your dog to walk, you're like, hey, doggy, please come towards me, you're pulling on the leash, so let's try to draw a cute doggy. By the way, I have two doggies, right? And you're trying to pull on the doggy on its leash. So in this case, your force vector is along the leash. So that's gonna be your tension force, or let's just call it a force to keep it simple for now force and your displacement since you're trying to pull the doggy to the right your displacement is to the right so if we want to calculate how much work you're doing in trying to pull your doggy to follow you and walk with you because let's say it didn't want to follow you it just wanted to be lazy so you're trying to pull your doggy my doggy's name is Gia so you're trying to pull Gia along and to measure the work done you need to connect these two vectors tail to tail, because you want to find the angle theta. So you're going to redraw the two vector quantities. So you have force vector, and your displacement is to the right. Now, in order to calculate how much work is done, and you're pulling your doggy, you need to find the angle form when they are joined tail to tail. So in this case, always try to make sure that you're calculating these quantities by drawing it tail to tail and the angle form between the two of them is going to help you calculate the work done again this is a geometrical way there is another way but then that you do require more math so you do need to check out my math channel for that one that is beyond the scope of grade 11 and we can learn it in further years so please hit up the next video i'm going to show you how to do the calculations with the equation all right, see you in the next video.